Hi, it's Anna Mason, and in time for Halloween, I wanted to show you how I create the form to this rounded, solid-looking pumpkin using watercolour. The process began, as always, with a drawing. I outlined lightly the key sections or ribs of the pumpkin, as well as the stalk. My drawing was based on a photo, which I find has the advantage over working from life, in that how light falls on the subject is fixed and won't change in a photo and getting the light and dark parts of the pumpkin in the right places is absolutely crucial to achieving its rounded form. I began painting by applying the lightest tones within the pumpkin. Within the skin, these are the colours in the lightest highlights, but I applied them all the way over the pumpkin skin using my bigger brush and applying the paint in the direction of form up and down the pumpkin's ribs so that any overlaps in my paint would actually help create shape. With that first wash dry, I applied another layer to the pumpkin skin everywhere except for the lightest highlights. This way I could see the highlights clearly and make sure I didn't paint over them. Next, when that layer was dry, I went in with the very darkest tones. I used very thick dark orange paint and a small brush to apply the very darkest areas of shadow between the pumpkin's ribs and at the bottom of the pumpkin. Then I watered the mix down a little and added a little yellow, which lightened the mix some more as well as changing its colour a bit. I used this slightly lighter mix to work on the darker mid-tones. I used my medium brush and stippled with it to leave gaps through to the lighter paint underneath and create a textured look to the skin. The look was a little too textured as the contrast was too strong with the gaps through to the earlier layers. So now I applied the mid-mid tones. I added more yellow to lighten the mix as well as alter its colour. I focused on the transitions into the lighter areas, but I also used a big brush to apply a glaze over the darker parts too to darken them further, and also to make the lighter little gaps darker too, which had the effect of unifying the skin. Next I worked on the lighter mid-tones, watering down my mix and adding more yellow. I stippled again with a smaller brush around the highlights, leaving any areas that I thought might be lighter in tone than this mix would make them. Because of the way that tone is relative, I could now see that the lightest tones, including many of the highlights, needed darkening a touch to be brought back in balance. So I began the process of making tonal adjustments by working into them again, making sure that I continued to add texture with stippling. With the lightest tones and mid-tones now darkened, I could see that the darkest tones and the darker mid-tones needed darkening some more, so I worked on those again with my small brush. Ensuring that the layer underneath was dry, I went on to use my bigger brush to again darken the mid-mid-tones a touch by applying another glaze which also further unified and solidified the pumpkin skin. Next I painted the stalk. As that was one of the darkest parts of the painting overall, having it painted meant that I could go on to make a series of further fairly subtle tonal adjustments to any areas of the pumpkin that needed darkening, using my smaller brush and watery mixes. I also paid close attention to getting the texture to the skin looking right, changing my brush techniques to get it spot on. And with those final adjustments made, the pumpkin was finished. A full video class of this pumpkin covering what colours and brush techniques to use is available now in my online school. If you've enjoyed this tip video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'd love it if you'd share it with your friends. And if you'd like to take one of my tried and tested video classes for free, pop over to animasonart.com where you'll find even more resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Remember, you won't improve your painting unless you make the time to paint, so be sure to schedule in some me time this week and paint something you love. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon for another tip for creating watercolours with WOW! Happy Halloween!